This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream and Nebula. Imagine if you couldn't feel pain. Imagine if the only way that you knew that you'd broken your leg was because your shin bone was tickling your thigh. Or the only way that you knew that you had cut off your finger was because you had fewer fingers. Or the only way that you knew that your hand was being flame grilled was because of the smell of your own burning flesh. Well, there's one person who knows exactly what that's like. Joanne Cameron, a retired school teacher from Scotland who has experienced cuts, burns, broken bones and even childbirth without ever feeling any pain. She's had dental surgery without anesthesia and numerous surgical operations with little or no need for pain relief. She's even lent on her stove, only noticing when smelling her own burning flesh. But the inability to feel pain was not the only thing that was unusual. She also never panics, never feels stressed or anxious, and is a constant optimist. How annoying. And no, it's not because she's just a tough cookie full of Scottish grit. It's actually because of an incredibly rare genetic mutation. The moment of realisation came when, at age 65, Joanne's hip was x-rayed, revealing massive deterioration of the joint. And she stunned doctors when revealing that she hadn't felt any pain. And while in hospital, they noticed something else. Her thumbs. They were deformed by osteoarthritis. She was immediately booked in for a double hand operation, a procedure that has been described by surgeons as excruciating. But again, Joanne felt no pain after the operation. Once her surgeries were complete and Joanne had recovered, she was referred to the pain specialists at UCL in London. The team there delved into Joanne's DNA to look for clues to find out what makes her so unusual. The first mutation that scientists found is common in the general population. It dampens down the activity of a gene called FAR. This gene makes an enzyme that breaks down enandamide, a chemical in the body that is central to pain sensation, mood and memory. The less enandamide is broken down, the more its effects are felt, including pain relief. But it was the second mutation that the scientists found that mystified them. A missing chunk of DNA that chopped off the front of a previously unknown gene. The researchers think that this newly discovered gene acts like a volume knob for the far gene, and so wittedly named it the far out gene. But because Joanne's volume knob was missing, her far gene fell silent. 
and with no enzyme being made to break down anandamide, it built up in Joanne's system to the point where she has twice as much as found in the general population. The discovery of a gene that can essentially turn off pain is understandably very exciting for scientists, especially those that work for pharmaceutical companies. The first drug that's able to target and successfully disable the far out gene will not only be a huge leap forward for pain relief, but will also be extremely profitable. And I'm sure that the 60 million people worldwide with chronic pain, including myself, will happily pay good money for such a drug. But how far should medicine go with reducing pain and anxiety? Removing them altogether might have a number of negative effects too, as exampled in the scarred hands of Joanne Cameron. The lack of feedback to something that's causing you physical harm could result in bodily damage that goes beyond repair. Not feeling the pain of a severely deteriorated hip joint or the arthritis in your hands may sound great, but there's risk of long-term debilitating damage if these things go untreated. Obviously, too much pain and anxiety is a bad thing but now and then they can also be very useful. After all, these systems develop to let us know when something is wrong. Plus, elevated levels of anandamide cause memory problems. Joanne Cameron confirmed this, saying that she often lost things and forgot words mid-sentence. And can you truly experience joy unless you've experienced pain and suffering? Or, as Mark Twain once put it, Happiness ain't a thing in itself, it's only a contrast with something that ain't pleasant. Then again, Joanne seems perfectly happy, maybe even more so than the average person. And even if, hypothetically, she never experiences true happiness, who cares? I mean, what even is happiness? When you boil it down, it's basically just chemical reactions and interacting neurons that tells our brains that something's good to eat or that someone might be a good mate. Is there even such a thing as true happiness? Maybe it's just a, an unattainable man-made myth designed to make us buy more crap off Amazon. And if so, bravo Jeff Bezos. Bravo. Whoa, sorry. On to more pressing issues, such as my horrendously painful broken leg. Ah, Jesus! Oh, the pain! Oh, sweet Jesus, the pain! Oh. Where's my phone? Okay, the phone's downstairs. Mom! Hey, thanks for watching, and thanks for being here with me in my daughter's playroom, which is also where I keep all of my filming gear in this cupboard, which I've beautifully lit for you in true YouTube style. Get a red light, get a blue light, mix them, YouTube. Anyway, fun fact, at the beginning of this video when I'm in the attic, that scene was actually a lot longer and more complex. Um, uh, uh, so I had to cut it down for YouTube. <laughs> yes. But instead of wasting all that footage, I decided to make a special edition director's extended cut, including BTS, and I've put it on Nebula. <laughs> Baby. I'm Dom Burgess, and welcome to Dom's Yoga. But what is Nebula? Great question. Thanks. It's a streaming platform created for and by your favourite edu creators, featuring brilliant people such as... Windows Productions, Real Life Law, Mary Spender, Mike Boyd, Lindsay Ellis, Mustard, Legal Eagle, Real Engineering, Joe Scott, Jordan Harrod, Austin McConnell, and many, many more. It's a place where creators can post ad-free videos, can experiment with different types of content, and collaborate in ways that wouldn't work on YouTube. 
For example, Tom Scott's game show, Money. I have nothing in my box. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. I think you're full of shit. I wish I could show you. I have oh. nothing in my box. There's a lot of suspicion gone I over that. I'm but what has all this stuff about Nebula got to do with Curiosity Stream, the sponsor of this video? Well, Nebula has partnered up with them. So when you sign up to Curiosity Stream, you'll also get Nebula for free. It's not a trial. You'll have full access to Nebula as long as you are a Curiosity Stream member. <laughs> And since you have to stay inside, why not treat yourself to some lovely David Attenborough, Stephen Hawking, Hannah Fry, Jim Al-Khalili and all sorts of other top-notch shows, like Dynamic Genomes, all about how genetics is shaping our future, including how we can use it to predict what criminal suspects will look like just from the DNA they leave at a crime scene. This is Curiosity Stream. So click the link to get Curiosity Stream and Nebula for 26% off. And not only do you get all of this great content, you also get to directly help this channel when you use the link curiositystream.com forward slash Dom Burgess. And all for the insanely low price of $14.79 per year. Not per month, per year really is a great deal and it really does help this channel out so please click that link sorry sound really desperate now wendover productions real life laura mary spender mike ford and mustard lindsay ellis and tom scott and legal legal real engineering joe scott jordan harriet oscar mcconnell and many more